I'm going to try help you understand better how licensing works with Microsoft Power Platform. I will center the whole explanation on Power Apps and Power Automate, and of course, all the uh, price information that and the names of the licenses that we see in this video are subject to change. They are only valid right now, 2024, at the date of this video, because Microsoft, for sure, they are going to change the names and prices in the future. Well, let's take a look at those. Let's start with Power Apps. Uh, all the prices that I'm going to show you, they are available in the public pages, so it's uh, free, it's fully transparent from Microsoft. Of course, well, you'll see that some uh, have a discount if you have a minimum of a certain number of licenses on your organization. But of course, depending on, depending on your size, you will be able to negotiate better prices. These are the publicly available prices for everyone. You may be able to negotiate better prices. All right, let's take a look. So, Programs Developer Plan. Don't get fixated in this one because this only works for developer environments. What are developer environments? Well, let's take a look. If you go to make the programs.com and you change environments here, uh, let's see here, you'll see that some environments have environment type developer. Um, if you follow the steps, you will be able to create a developer environment in your organization unless this has been um, disabled by the admins because this can be controlled here in uh, the environments in the Portable Admin Center. And here you will see if you are an admin how many developer environments you have. And what this license for our developer plan enables any anyone who has developer environments up to three per person is to enjoy all the premium capabilities inside that environment. Those environments are not uh, designed or, re or production ready. If you want to be able to use the Power Platform premium features everywhere in your organization, in all environments, then you will need this license. $20 per user per month, it's a complete bargain. Now, you probably have heard of some licenses that cost $5 per user per month. Uh, let's take a look at the marketplace because they are no longer uh, listed in the public page, but here, Power Apps per app, uh, here wh where I'm, I'm in the Microsoft Admin Center, I'm in Marketplace, and you can filter by Power Platform licenses, okay? So if you have access to the environment at uh, the Admin Center in your organization where you buy licenses, or maybe you have a, a partner that buys licenses for you, you will find these licenses that is not listed right now uh, uh, in the public page, and this is called Power Apps per app, and you see what? Four, 70 euros, five US dollars per license per month. And now what this allows you is to um, enable a user in an environment. Uh, how, this, how does this work? Let's go back to here environments. So I go to capacity, add-ons, I'm here. I already have one here. What I would do is select an environment, for example, this one. And here I can add app passes. This is where I would add this uh, license over here. And this enables a user inside that environment to use one app uh, that, use, that has premium capabilities. Let's use some, uh, here in this presentation, some, a table that will allow you to uh, understand this better. So if you have a Power Apps premium license, this one, don't worry, you can use premium capabilities everywhere. But if you want to have the cheaper version, the $5 version, why? Because maybe you don't want that user or that user is not going to use more than this application. Maybe this is a proof of concept, but you are starting with Power Platform in your organization and you want to reduce the licensing costs as much as possible, then you will use these licenses. And let's take a look at this table from the documentation. User 3, two apps in two different environments. I need two app passes. User 1, one environment, but two apps and one website. This is a portal for pages. Then I need three, easy enough. All right, now let's take a look at Power Automate licenses. And here we start with the Power Automate Premium license, five US dollars per month per user. And this is the equivalent to Power Apps Premium per user. Um, take a look here, models, well, AI builders, cha uh, credits change. But basically this is equivalent to uh, using the premium capabilities for Power Automate. Now, with the Power Apps license, you can also create Power Automate flows. They're supposed to be linked to the applications that you build, um, but you can 
uh, create water treatment fluids. Anyway, that's why also it has a higher price. Now, here we introduce a new concept, okay? Uh, let me jump to the slides. Um, <laughs> it's a very obvious slide. Uh, Let's take a look. Power Automate licenses have a different concept. We have user licenses and capacity licenses. Okay, user licenses have Power Automate Premium, Power Automate Trial, Power Automate, Power Automate Premium in the end. And capacity licenses have this Power Automate Process and Hosted Process. In other words, or barely said, this one is user-based and these two are capacity-based. What does that mean? Well, capacity uh, licenses are the same as what we saw for this for us per app. They are not assigned to a user, rather they are assigned to an environment. So we would, and you guess that, you would add it here from the environment center, add-ons, capacity, here for, for a flow per a business process. This is where you would add a license for the environment. Now, the difference between these two is that this also gives you access to a Microsoft hosted virtual machine for desktop floats. If you are not going to uh, use desktop floats, then don't worry about that. Important to notice here, don't get fooled by what it says for automated process. This doesn't mean that it only allows you to use one single flow. The concept of a process is, let's say, wider than the concept of a flow. Let's use the term solution, maybe. So all uh, it's let's say all the flows owned by the same service principal will or service account will um, will be licensed with this uh, capacity license. So it's not one power automated flow; it's the uh, flows owned by a service principal or service user. And well, you'll tell me why would I get a license that is ten times higher, or, uh, it's more expensive than this one. And now this is when we need to talk about capacity limits or request limits in the port platform. Okay, limits in the platform. Well, we have two types of limits that I, want, I like to talk about, license limits and platform specific limits. Pla platform specific limits, I don't want to talk too much about that, but for example, if we take uh, Microsoft Database or SharePoint, there's a limit, a protection limit in the service in the platform. For example, how many requests, API requests, we can um, drive again or make against one of these services. For example, uh, Dataverse, I believe it is 30, 6,000 uh, requests in a five minute sliding window. For SharePoint, different limits, that depends on where you are going to connect. And if it's a different service, maybe for example, SAP, we, it will have different uh, limits, whether it's on the cloud or on-premise. So that's, that's normal, every technology has its limits, but we are going to talk about licensing limits. And this is a little bit different. So take a look at this uh, table from the, uh, from the documentation. And pay attention to this call. Forget about this one. This is from uh, when Microsoft is enforcing this new model. They are giving you a transition period, a grace period, where they are giving you more slack with the numbers. Uh, so don't pay attention to this uh, column. Pay attention to this one over here. And take a look. For ultimate premium, for ultimate process. 40K, 250K per license, <coughs> per bin for 24 hours. Um, what's this about? Well. <clears throat> Every action, if you have a power automate flow, every box in it, uh, it's a PPR. PPR stands for Power Platform Request. And just go, uh, every execution of the flow per boxes, it's what you are um, consuming when that uh, flow is executed. Now, if you start having lots and lots of flows with uh, deployed with the same account or with the same license, you can fill up this limit pretty quickly. Also, you have to take into account um, how are you building those flows if you are using, for example, with other words, a multi a create multiple or you're in a four creating one by one the rows. So also depending on, on how well you build or you architect your solutions, you impact these license limits. So if you have a solution that is going to be highly used and is critical, critical in your organization, then you should uh, use this license because it will allow you to have a wider limit of power platform uh, requests per 24 hours. And these uh, licenses can be stacked one over the other. So if you, the more you need, the more licenses you need to buy. 
Now, before finishing the video, a couple of comments about the Power Platform Licensing Guide. There is a public document that you can find, just Google it, and you will get the latest version because Microsoft is constantly updating this uh, document. Now, before finishing the video, I want to talk briefly about the Power Platform Licensing Guide. This document is publicly uh, available from Microsoft Links. You can just Google it out, Power Platform Licensing Guide. This is the 2024 version, July 2024. Um, get the latest version always to get the latest information. Information. Now here you can go real deep into all the topics, all the things that we do with that we've seen. Some of the snapshots that I've taken are from the licensing guide. I recommend that you take a deeper look if you want to understand fully uh, the licensing topics. But I want to just step for a moment in AI Builder because here, wait a second, yeah, exactly here. Uh, some clients have uh, asked me a lot about how I build their licensing, so licensing works and they were uh, astonished that they actually renew every month so all the credits that you have renew on a monthly basis if you spend them the next uh, first day of the next month you will have those credits again for you to consume and this obviously when you find uh, you uh, understand how licensing works because in the end these licenses are allowing you to use compute power compute power in any um, Azure subscription in the end. Uh, this is a monthly uh, recurrent bill that Microsoft is going to charge you. And uh, the, those resources, when you pay the license every month, then you're renewing the rights to use that amount of um, compute power. And so a uh, builder credits, because you pay them every month, you get that uh, new capacity every month as well. And then please use AI Builder. You're going to reap a lot of benefits from out of it. It that massively increase, um, exceeds the amount of uh, money that you are going to spend. And well, that's that. So thank you very much for everything to the end. I hope this video is useful and give you a little bit more understanding on the licensing options that you have with Microsoft. Berman also dynamics, uh, you may be overlapping uh, with the licenses you need to take a look. Maybe, for example, if you have a dynamics license, then you don't need to um, assign a perhaps premium license, depending on the one that you are using. Uh, for example, sales professional is not the same as enterprise, and those uh, maybe sales professional also needs a power premium license for a new custom solution that you are providing to that user. So. Of course, you need to take a look case by case, but generally this video has covered uh, how licensing works on a broad level and some uh, real nuances as well, especially on the capacity limits. Thank you very much. Take care and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Bye.